Hello everyone, this is Rajesh Isan Gupta and we are here in the third installment of our week on the colonial interventions and Khadi and we have been talking about the use of textiles and a representation of textiles in the colonial archive and then how textiles also played a very important role not only in terms of trade but also marking identity and then also like I mean how the idea of community was sort of constituted around textiles, the kind of textiles which are used. So, we will continue this discussion today by starting with some of the albums and then representation of the textiles. So, in this discussion we will be looking at the representation of people, textiles and activities, these three kind of things and we will see that I mean how these three things were interconnected in the colonial archive or the way in which we see that I mean there were particular kinds of archives were created or albums or documentations were created and in which we see that this intertwining of the idea of how textile activities and activities can mean like I mean different kind of actions that can be occupation that can be like day to day activities and so on and then of course the prime focus stays on people, the people whom the, uh, the British government was ruling over. So, we will start with the discussion with uh, James Forbes Watson's this uh, album that we have already started talking about and this is again like we are going back to the textile manufacturers of India and here we see that I mean there is this section in which we there is also a dedicated sort of focus on the costumes which are used by people in the Indian subcontinent. So, Primarily we find that in Watson's album there are those textile swatches if we remember that I mean there are those pages and in which like I mean there are those prominent textile swatches at the center of the page and then there can be a smaller swatch for like examination at the bottom and then on the top there is this one level in which we see that I mean the, all the details about the textile is written and that is how we see each and every page is arranged and mostly this scheme is continued across the all the other albums there. So, in terms of the album or like I mean the section on costume what we see is that this kind of pages in which there are those again this in this rectangular pages four images or more than one images usually we find them to be there and then the way in which like I mean the images are arranged one can see that these are all uh, images of full size not full size like I mean these are images of human beings and we can see them from head to toe and the reason for that is actually to sort of understand that what kind of costumes people wear in the Indian subcontinent. And by that I do not mean that they just had this innocent curiosity in terms of understanding that how these costumes are used by people, but it is also about like what kind of material is there and then what does the material say to us, to the readers, to the viewers and the catalogers. And then in the kind of material, in the kind of like I mean the execution of this kind of costumes and everything else, they also come back to the idea of this community identity, something we find that to be there very much ingrained in a lot of documentation projects that the colonial government had undertaken. And we can we can start talking about that from the anthropological uh, documentations that started from the um, late 18th century and 19th century we see that a lot of this kind of documentations took place. So, what happens in terms of this anthropological documentation that I mean it is a kind of a uh, way to understand the features of people and by features it can start with like I mean the facial features, the color of the body, of course the racial distinction remains a very important part of this kind of documentation and it was a deliberate or perhaps like I mean it is not just deliberate but also it was kind of a strong trust we can find that, that the, uh, the documentators or like I mean the catalogers were interested in to show the racial difference between the Western Europeans and the South Asians and that remained as a way for which they could always claim their superiority on the people they were ruling upon. And then apart from the color of the body, we also find that particular kind of facial features, bodily features and then like hairstyle, beard and everything else, those things were taken in account and those could also tell the catalogers about like I mean what kind of people they are looking at. So, 
uh, if we think about the botanical documentations or like the zoological documentations, it was very similar to the way in which we also find the human human beings were also documented by looking at the external features. So again, we are going back to this idea about reading visually. So that's what the catalogers were doing predominantly that reading these figures visually try to understand that what all kind of visual uh, specificities these figures or like the people they have and why I say figures instead of like I mean uh, calling them people all the time is because that is how they were treated it's almost like those samples in a lab and then they can be studied uh, minutely and then like their features can be added to the archive that they were creating and in this case we find that I mean uh, alongside the bodily features the other thing that comes up very importantly is the depiction of textiles and in, in this page of this album, what we find that there are um, two people in the upper half of this image and then like I mean these two people they seem to be like I mean in a very similar posture and their turban style and the way they are wrapping their lower part of the body with a lungi or a dhoti kind of attire is also very similar and then they are wearing a jama on the top of on the upper part of the body and then they have a shoulder cloth with a fairly big shoulder cloth that kind of like I mean covers one of their shoulders and then it also sort of like I mean wraps around their waist. So this is how we find it and then the kind of distinction in color a lot of time the colors which were used there and the lot of time like I mean the way of wearing a turban and then also the kind of patterns and everything else would be used in this kind of costumes would also mean a lot about about like what kind of uh, people we are looking at from which community they belong to and everything else so seeing textiles in this case is also sort of like I mean seeing the visible marks of a community in, in uh, for, for, for the catalogers so we can see that I mean how textiles were understood in the colonial archives as a, as a very important um, aspect of understanding the people and then in the lower part of the image we see that I mean there are two figures and uh, one, one person has dyed their beard in perhaps in henna and that's the reason we see this kind of like I mean this brownish tone in the beard and then like I mean the both these people they seem to be from warrior clan and so that's the reason they are carrying either stick or dagger and sword and everything else so that there we find that the kind of dressing is also different however this person in the left seems to be definitely from higher strata compared to like I mean the other people that we see in the same album because this person definitely is wearing expensive silk with like I mean perhaps zari borders and that's the reason we have like I mean the golden borders in this shoulder cloth that we see I mean in all these cases we do see that I mean there is a lower garment except for this man we see all of them they're sort of like I mean wrapping an untailored fabric around their loins but here what we see that I mean this man is the only person who's perhaps wearing a pajama or trousers so apart from that what we see that all of them they're wearing a jama and then this shoulder cloth turban and of course a lower garment and in this case what we see that I mean this old man is someone who's distinctive from the other three people because the other three people seem to be wearing cotton whereas this uh, man in the left lower left is wearing silk and if we think about the kind of like I mean depiction of people from the court and people uh, who, who belong to the commoners realm would be depicted in very different manner if we think about the way in which like miniature paintings and, and um, other visual representations before the colonial era uh, would, would represent them. So in terms of that we can see if we remember the miniature paintings and so on there uh, we, we see the clear distinction and also like the hierarchy between the people who belong to the court and then the commoners but in this case what we see that I mean all these people are almost like I mean treated at least on the surface equally and, and um, that's the reason we find that it's a new scheme of documentation in which we find that different 
uh, people from different social strata are sort of like I mean put together in one page. Now, when I say that I mean uh, this this kind of like I mean uh, um, this this seemingly equality or like a neutral way of like showing people is something that is there but we should not mistake that as actually equality or if these people all of them were treated equally that's again the answer would be no and and uh, in this case if we see that i mean why these people are sort of represented in the same page is is not because of like i mean there is a there is a conscious drive towards showing them on the equal plane but all of them perhaps like there are certain kind of visual features physical features or like i mean in terms of like their community identity and all those things are somewhere or other connected and that is the reason the catalogers had made the decisions to sort of like i mean put them in one group so this is how like i mean people were usually um, sort of divided into groups and cataloged in the archives now if we think about the cataloging of people and professions and of course like i mean textiles we can go back to like i mean the late 18th century and there we find that i mean certain kind of like i mean documentation was there underway and one of the very well known folio in which we see this kind of documentation would be there by francis balser uh, solvents and solvents album that is called hindus or like the hindus which was published in around like I mean very early in the 19th century I mean of course like I mean the documentation started earlier than that in the late 18th century and in this one we, what we see that I mean this anthropological approach or like this ethnographic approach of studying the different communities and their profession how they live and everything else so those things we certainly see them to be very prominently presented now what happens in these images that we see on screen so in the in the left side of the image i mean the left side of the slide we see that i mean there are two figures and they are certainly like i mean placed in this hut in this thatch roof hut setting and which suggests that i mean this is actually it's a residential quarter of these two people or perhaps like i mean one of those people and then what we see that i mean this one man in the right end of this image is standing here and very prominently dark skinned person and who's wearing a dhoti a just a plain dhoti with perhaps a small border in his in the lower part of his body and then he is supervising perhaps the other person who's sitting in the loom and weaving now what we see in this case that i mean this weaving whatever is happening here it's again it's a pit loom and in which we have already discussed the characteristics of the pit loom in which we see that how the weaver sort of like i mean sits on the ground level and then sort of like i mean his this loom is sort of like i mean spread on the ground and then it sort of like i mean goes beyond the ground the loom structure like the paddles and everything else and so this is something we see as a very typical depiction of the weavers and this image is also called tatis and that that means like i mean tati is the word for um, 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 the weavers and and of course like i mean as we know that i mean solvents was there in the bengal province from a late uh, 18th century from 1790s to like i mean uh, early 19th century so during this time like i mean a lot of his documentations were focused on bengal and and so like i mean this very atypical um, um, i mean very typical way of like i mean making this this uh, thatched half hut roof i mean this thatched roof huts and everything else so all those things we certainly see them to be there prominently present now the other image that we have in the right side of the screen is that sort of like i mean looks into the professions of the kumars and kumars are the ones who are as we know that i mean they are the ones the potters but in this case it seems like they should be spelled as kumars which mean the blacksmiths or the metalsmiths and so in this case we certainly see that i mean how there is this man who is standing in front of the hut and in this case the hut is different from the one we see in the left side 
So the one in the right side is much more open and this man who is sitting in the background and is sort of like I mean blowing air into the fire so that like I mean he can perhaps like I mean make the metal ready to be beaten and made into whatever shapes that they want. So this is the process and here we also see that I mean vessels full of water those are kept which as we also know that I mean those things are indispensable for the work of the metal smiths. So this kind of like I mean activities we find them to be there represented in the colonial documentation and these images were made in etching technique and then after they were compiled into folio they were also hand painted. So, so the colors that we see on these etching prints were added after these images were produced. So, in these two images what we see that that uh, craft plays a very important role that different kind of this occupation when we talk about the occupational sectors. So we see that I mean there are those unorganized occupational sectors that uh, they have documented and this is definitely not a very organized sector and as we know that even today a lot of the craft sectors in our country remains uh, sort of like I mean decentralized and, and that is perhaps like I mean that, that adds to the diversity of the craft production that we have in our country. So this is something that they were also interested in the colonial documentators and they sort of like I mean focused on this. And the focus on that is not just in terms of like understanding craft or profession but it is also in terms of like I mean how the making of the community that remains around making of craft objects and that's the reason like I mean as I have already mentioned that uh, the British administrators wanted to sort of like I mean put people under different categories that this is one group of uh, people and, and they, they specialize in particular kind of craft making or particular kind of skill and then like I mean then there are the criminal groups and so on. So if this is the kind of like the uh, way in which uh, uh, documentations were done, cataloging was done. So like making of the community is something we can understand that was also very much uh, intertwined with the making of craft objects and that is the reason like making this this idea of a process is something that has been depicted in these images and we can we can also see that I mean even though there is a way in which like I mean the the making is emphasized in these images but then the the prime figures who need to be sort of um, uh, who, who grabs the viewers attention as soon as we look at these images they are the ones this this men or like women we see them to be like I mean standing firm or like sitting and sort of like I mean uh, um, uh, you know they, they, they occupy a very important role in these images either standing almost like centrally in this image or like I mean sort of making this L shaped compositional arrangement in, in which like I mean the stability of the composition sort of like is reliant on the images or this prime images who are on focus. So this is how we find that there is this two things which are happening simultaneously. One is like for this prime figures who are there for the people to read them, their body, the textiles they are wearing, their physical features and everything else to understand that this is the community that they are talking about. And then the identity of the community, the process and everything that sort of plays out in the background for people to have more context on them. So this is how like the idea of community, profession, textile, they become intertwined in this kind of archives. Now the other aspect that we also see that I mean there are those specific ways in which like I mean draping and everything are done and that is something we find that to be there very it's significant in Solvin's documentation and the other colonial catalogers documentation as well. And so this specific way of dressing if we consider that what happens to people from different social strata background and so on. So here in the left side of the screen we see there is this woman who's again standing prominently in the foreground and then like I mean this woman we see her to be draped in this plain cotton sari with a with a thin border and perhaps a pallu here. So this is what we see here and then the way in which like the woman wears the sari the way like I mean the draping style is there it's a very 
typical way of wearing sari that is found in Bengal and part of eastern India and, and uh, which would be very different from uh, the, the standardized way of wearing sari today. So, this is something we find that how this kind of plain uh, um, untailored cotton or like I mean this plain untailored piece of fabric that can be dhoti, that can be sari and then uh, the, the catalogers were fascinated by uh, this, this different kind of dressing styles and so this is, this is something we, we find them to be there that I mean how attention, minute attention was given towards like I mean this particular way of draping and, and what did this signify. So, this kind of like the significance if we consider it here, it is not just about documenting the, the specificity of this this draping but it is also about like i mean how this draping goes back to the idea of a community and by that i mean that i mean how this kind of draping can make the catalogers or the administrators understand from which region from which caste or community these people belong to so that becomes easier for the uh, administrators to uh, sort of like i mean make sense of this land that which was way too chaotic for them to rule over so we see that I mean this person who is standing prominently with a pot of water on her head. So, she is there by a water body and then on the and behind that we see that there is this kind of this gateway and presumably it is a temple complex and then here we see the temple towers and that is the temple tower of Kaligat temple in Calcutta. So, Kaligat temple being perhaps the foremost important temple in Calcutta and so this here what we see that I mean what kind of like I mean activities that take place around the temple and so people are taking bath in this water body. It is perhaps this is this canal or the river Adi Ganga and then like I mean after taking bath in the river they go to the temple and pray. So, this is this is the usual like I mean the process that that sort of like I mean takes place here. So, in this case we do not really see a particular kind of um, um, livelihood or profession or occupation is shown, but it is a way of life that has been depicted and again like I mean even in this case how textile plays a very important role that it is about this very specific custom taking bath in this particular canal and then going to the temple and pray and also like I mean collecting water from this canals or rivers and then sort of like I mean going back to home for serving the household members. So, all those things are then sort of like I mean situated around this area. So, the region regional specificity and everything which we also see in the architecture then that is sort of like I mean you know is also reflected in the textiles as well the particular way of draping the textile. So, this is how all the visible um, um, sort of like I mean the signs of reading a community are then all put together in images like this and as I have mentioned that how textile as we see in all these bodies are draped in textiles. So, how textile play a very important role in sort of like marking their identity. Now, the other image that we have in the right side of the screen and that is called notch or notch and this is usually the courtesans that we see who would be there in the, the of the zamindars and it is not just there as a everyday activity, but they mark like special occasions in which this the courtesans would be called to the wealthy people's houses mostly the zamindars or the babus this 19th century another this newly um, created elite in the 19th century who who sort of like I mean uh, uh, gained sort of cultural uh, and and uh, not not primarily cultural but also like the econ economic capital in the 19th century and they became wealthy during this time so we we find that that how um, uh, this this particular uh, occasion or like I mean this this way of sort of um, doing the notch is something that sort of like I mean says about a different different kind of or societal structure and how again if we compare the kind of textiles which are shown here there are also something that says very clearly about the social strata of the people. So, for example, the group of people that we see in the right side of the image here we see that the people who are playing the musical instruments or perhaps like I mean supporting the dancers all of them are draped in just plain lower garment and that is this white 
unbleached, undyed dhotis. And then some of them, they also have like, I mean, head coverings, which is also like, I mean, unbleached, undyed cotton. So this says something about like, I mean, these people also belong to the similar people that we have already looked at, the communities of the artisans or like, I mean, the performers whose professions are around like, I mean, making either craft objects or like, I mean, attributing music and different kinds of like, I mean, these cultural activities. Now, then if we see that the other people who are surrounding here, so here we find that there is this elite musician who seems to be very different from the other musicians who are seated here. And this sarangi, which this musician is playing, is also a very different kind of instrument from like, I mean, the other instruments, like, I mean, the mridangam and then like the veena and all those other things that we see them. Then in the center stage, we have this three women who are elaborately dressed and we can see that I mean the colors who are, which are there in the attire of these women are something that is drastically different from this unbleached undyed cotton and that says something that I mean perhaps these are not cotton textiles but I mean as, as we know that I mean also looking at the costumes which survived from 19th century that a lot of this kind of costumes would be made of like heavy brocade or silk and so on. So all this different kind of like I mean it's not just about uh, uh, the the bodies of the people which I'm trying to say here which I'm trying to make a point here but it is also the kind of textiles and if we compare them to the different kind of brocades and uh, cotton and everything else that we have studied so far we can understand that by means of depicting textile it was a successful and effective way of sort of like, I mean, marking the community identity on the people and which they were documenting. So this is something that says that about like, I mean, how the documentation, the colonial documentation, documentation of the people, community, and then like, of course, the profession and everything else, all of them, they were very much dependent on the depiction of textile, the depiction of like the draping style and everything else. We'll continue on this discussion in the next lecture. Thank you.